Hello, here's a big as well as a tiny welcome from me. Now, we already know how to express numbers in various forms, don't we? And how they can also be expressed as squares and cubes of a number, right? Let's do a quick recap of this. So, the term 6 square is basically equal to 6 into 6, right? And then we have 6 cube which is equal to 6 into 6 into 6. And what about 6 raised to 7? That's right. It will be equal to 6 multiplied by 6, a total of 6 times. So, whenever we are expressing a number as something raised to something else, then it is said to be expressed as a power. In our example, 6 raised to 7, 6 is called the base, and 7 is called the index or the power of 6. Do you remember we talked about various things having different sizes? We know how to express these large sizes or large numbers like the distance between the moon and the earth, right? Let's see. The distance between the moon and the earth is 3, 8, 4, 4, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0 meters or 3,84,400 kilometers. That's a big huge number, isn't it? Well, it is tedious to write down such a massive number as it is. Hence, it is expressed in terms of power as 3.844 into 10 raised to 8 meters. Do you see what we did there? We basically removed the zeros and expressed them in powers of 10. So whenever we express a number as a raised to m, it means that the base is a and the exponent is m. And knowing that is the first step in our journey to understand the exponents and powers. So far so good? Okay, you see whatever numbers we have seen are numbers with positive exponents. But what about negative exponents? Is it possible to express them in that manner? And what good will it do by learning how to handle negative exponents? Let's find out. Now, let me tell you frankly that this section requires a good amount of critical understanding. So we have to lay down a really strong foundation and mind you, no mugging up, okay? It's math and I promise you it's going to be fun. Moving on, the first thing that we learn in exponents and powers is that a number is multiplied with itself a certain number of times that is equal to its exponent. So something similar probably should happen even when a number is raised to a power that is negative, isn't it? So let's dive deep into this. Now we know that 10 cubed is 10 into 10 into 10. This is equal to 1000. Now pay close attention. 1000 can be written as 10,000 divided by 10, right? The logic is 1 0 from the numerator and the denominator will get cancelled and give 1000 again. Similarly, 10 squared is 10 into 10, which is nothing but 100 and that can be written as 1000 by 10, which is 10 cube upon 10. Now, tell me what is 10 raised to 1? Yes, it is indeed equal to 10. And this is nothing but 100 by 10. Finally, we come to 10 raised to 0, which is equal to 1. Now, this one is nothing but 10 upon 10. Isn't that right? So, what do we conclude from all of this? As we reduce the power of 10, the value becomes one tenth of the previous value. So 10 raised to 3 is equal to 10 raised to 4 upon 10. Similarly, 10 raised to 2 will be equal to 10 raised to 3 upon 10. And then we had 10 raised to 0 is equal to 10 raised to 1 upon 10, which gave us 1. This means that if we continue to go along the number line and reduce the power further down to minus 1, minus 2 and so on, then we would just have to continue dividing the previous number by 10. Are you getting the logic? 
Okay, let's understand it better with an example. We'll take the first negative integer as an exponent. Then 10 raised to minus 1 will be the number in this case. And this will be nothing but 10 raised to 0 divided by 10 which is 1 upon 10. Now 1 by 10 can also be expressed as 1 upon 10 raised to 1. Similarly, 10 raised to minus 2 can be written as 10 raised to minus 1 upon 10 which is 1 by 10 into 1 by 10. This is equal to 1 by 100 which is nothing but 1 upon 10 raised to 2. So we have finally arrived at our logical foundation of the numbers having negative powers. This can be generalized as a raised to minus m is equal to 1 upon a raised to m. This shows us that the negative power of a number is basically the reciprocal of the positive power. We will discuss this in more detail later. For now, let us now apply this standard expression to some examples and check whether it is registered in our minds perfectly or not. Okay, so we have the first number as 4 raised to minus 3 and on applying the rule a raised to minus m is equal to 1 upon a raised to m. This is 1 upon 4 raised to plus 3. We can now apply this rule to any number. For instance, 12 raised to minus 4 will be equal to 1 upon 12 raised to 4. Similarly, 5 raised to minus 7 will be equal to 1 upon 5 raised to 7. So let me show you something interesting now, okay. Remember how I told you that the negative power of a number is essentially the reciprocal of its positive power? Let us look at the first rule with the help of an example. Suppose I have 4 raised to minus 3 into 4 raised to minus 5. This can be expressed as 1 upon 4 raised to 3 into 1 upon 4 raised to 5. Is that right? I suppose it is. You see here we have simply expressed negative powers in terms of positive powers. Now this can be written as 1 upon 4 raised to 3 into 4 raised to 5. Take a look at the denominator. Can we apply the first rule for positive exponents to it? Yes, we can. And this will lead us to find the value as 1 upon 4 raised to 3 plus 5. This is equal to 1 upon 4 raised to 8. Now we know that any integer raised to a negative power is equal to 1 upon that number raised to the positive power. So 1 upon 4 raised to 8 is nothing but 4 raised to minus 8. But we know that minus 8 is also equal to minus 3 plus minus 5. So we have 4 raised to minus 3 into 4 raised to minus 5 is equal to 4 raised to minus 3 plus minus 5 thereby proving the first rule to be true for negative exponents as well. Now in a similar way we can prove all the other rules of exponents and that's it. That was a wonderful journey into the world of sizes and their comparisons, wasn't it? Okay, no matter how large or small a number is, it can always be expressed in something that you are familiar with or something that does not cost us a lot of ink to write. On that note, I'll take your leave. You stay tuned for another wonderful exploration that we will set out for in the next topic. Until then, keep practicing. Tutimate. For more amazing video lectures, download the free app on the Apple App Store or Google Play Store.